but I, I got to tell you, I, I, LaDonna accused me of missing out this morning. She just don't know where I, I didn't miss nothing. And between LaDonna and Connie I, and Miss Francis, over the last few days, today I was driving down Main Street on my way home from the wedding reception to go change clothes and I started thinking about you getting the Holy Ghost again and the look that came over her face and it was it was almost identical, Connie and LaDonna both because they came down there with purpose and they prayed about 30 seconds and boom! And, and Brother Pete, I, I got in the Holy Ghost up on Main Street. If anybody had been standing out there, they thought I lost my mind. I was sitting there at the at the the stop sign, my shoulders hopping up and down and talking in tongues just right up town here. <laughs> hey, if a wino can sit on the street corner, a holy roller can sit on the street corner. Huh? <laughs> huh? Peter didn't say they weren't drunk. He just said they're not drunk, not drunk like you suppose. We still get drunk. I said we still get drunk. It ain't the old grapes of wrath. It's the new wine, the, the, the well springing up within us. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. I want to say on behalf of Brother Robin, Sister Iron, I'm so appreciative of all the hard work that went into having them a beautiful, beautiful wedding this afternoon. It was gorgeous. It was precious. And the reception was great. Uh, for all you folks to claim to be tired and all of that, y'all stayed, y'all stay, outstayed me this time, and I don't know if that's ever happened. And I, all I could think, Brother Pete, is this is just beautiful. There's so much purity and so much unity and, and so much, it's just loving folks. That's all it is. And you can't fake it. You can't fake that because it's real and you can feel it. Amen. Now, how many of you know when you tell somebody something, you got to do it? Because if, if you tell them that and you don't do it, you lied. Amen. Preach it, brother. Well, I think my wife stepped out to the bathroom, which is probably a good thing. Because she was sitting on the bed as I left this evening, and I said, I probably won't preach all that long tonight. And she said, please don't. <laughs> and, I said, and I said, I'm telling that as soon as I get behind the pulpit. No, you better not. Well, see, I'm the boss. No, I'm just, I'm just teasing. I see her back there acting all tough and stuff. I appreciate my wife and all the work that she puts into all the different jobs she has, uh, not the least of which is mama and my wife and Sunday school teacher and music director, and she gets about as many calls as I do for prayer, people to pray for. So I appreciate the wife that the Lord has blessed me with. Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him. Everybody say that. Of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Everybody say that. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, This is Jesus talking about Nathanael. He said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. And Nathanael saith unto him, Boy, she might not get her wish tonight because I'm feeling the Holy Ghost right now. Whew. Nathaniel looked at Jesus and said, how do you know who I am? From what occasion do you know me? 
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. I want to preach to you for a few minutes tonight on this subject. Come and see. Come and see. Pray with me right now. Lord, I thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. It's been a glorious day. Your presence has been here. Heaven has come down and visited with us today, and I'm so thankful of it. But, Lord, we're going to minister in the Word right now. We're going to minister into somebody else's life and see somebody else filled with the Holy Ghost, somebody else's life changed forever. Forever, God, I give you the praise for what you're about to do in this place uh, because there's nothing that I'm not expecting in the Holy Ghost. Uh, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Jesus' earthly ministry is just beginning. We know very, very little of Jesus' life before he began to preach. One little instance other than all the baby stuff, and everybody knows about the baby stuff. Born in Bethlehem, went to Egypt, Herod tried to kill him, you know, the wise men and the gold, the frankincense and the murder, the shepherds watching their flocks on the hillside by night and the angels crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Uh, 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 the Christmas story, we all know about that. But Jesus was 12 years old in the temple. We see just a little bit of a glimpse, Brother McKinney, into his life. It's not a, not a lot where he's teaching the scribes in the temple. Not a lot we see of Jesus' life. But now Jesus' ministry is stepping to the forefront. And he's in the process of choosing his disciples. And uh, I I might add to you that that's not a process that needs to be taken lightly. Jesus prayed all night long before that he chose his disciples. And and in this lesson or this this message that we have tonight, he has chosen three disciples during this this particular time. They are Andrew, Peter, and Philip. Uh, Andrew was previously a disciple of John the Baptist. Uh, And Brother Billy, anybody knows that if you're a disciple of John the Baptist, uh, he never preached that his was the only gospel. But he continually said, believe on him that cometh after me, who's mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. That was the refrain, the common refrain of the message of John the Baptist. He plainly declared that his message was only good for a short time. But there's coming one after me, he said. He was a disciple of John the Baptist and he had so long having followed John the Baptist that he heard John the Baptist's declaration or proclamation as Jesus came walking down the road and John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. And immediately, when John the Baptist said the Lamb of God, this spoke into Andrew's life uh, that that's the one John's been preaching about. uh, And the Bible said he immediately took up uh, and began to follow Jesus. Peter, he was Andrew's brother. Peter was not one of the first ones Jesus ran into. He was Andrew's brother. And he's the first one Andrew went to after finding Jesus, or or rather being introduced to Jesus. And he brought his brother, who known as Simon at that time, to Jesus. And as soon as he met him, Jesus said, No longer will you be called Simon, but you'll be called Cephas, which means a stone. Then the next day, Brother Pete, Philip, uh, on day number two, uh, Jesus went to Galilee uh, and he met Philip uh, and he just spoke two words to him, Brother McKinney, and he said, follow me. Uh, And Philip rose up and followed him. Uh, I'll tell you right now, just take a little side note. uh, One of the most beautiful things that I'm seeing about what the Lord's doing in our midst uh, is no longer is it the groaning and the moaning, uh, and that may happen at some point. uh, But people that just believe, uh, they receive. Uh, If you have faith uh, you shall be filled Uh, I'm seeing the Lord do what he promised he would do I'm seeing it happen like it did in the Bible I'm hearing people and seeing people filled with the spirit uh, based upon how hungry they are and how ready they are instead of somebody dragging them and and bringing them to an altar People are receiving the Holy Ghost based upon how hungry their spirit is. But Brother Pete, the Bible plainly declares, Blessed is he that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
It's just the way Jesus intended for it to be. When he says it, uh, we believe it and it happens. Jesus said, follow me. And he did. And he did. Just that simple. He felt, he heard the words of Jesus say, follow me. Then Nathaniel, he is found and witnessed to by Philip. He is most likely the disciple Bartholomew that we hear referred to later as these two names are interchangeable. Philip's announcement as he came to Nathaniel was simple. He said, Brother Billy, we have found him. We have found him. I like the fact, Brother David, that he didn't say it's a good possibility. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say let's try it out and see. But he said we have found him. I'm glad to tell you that when somebody gets a hold of the Holy Ghost, or rather the Holy Ghost gets a hold of them, there's not a doubt in your mind that you found what you've been looking for. There's not a doubt in your mind that you have reached the pinnacle at that point of what God has for you. I'm glad to say, Brother McKinney, that we found him. We found the truth. We found the right way. We have found the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's operating among us. We have found him. Not a way, not a possibility, but we found the one that we've heard prophesied about all of our lives. Now I want you to notice something right here. He said, we found the one that the prophets spoke of, of, that Moses and the law spoke of, and his name. Now, I want you to get this. Uh, you've got to see something right here. That he says, uh, his name is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. You new converts, you hear me right now. All this does is go to show uh, they, they didn't know who he was for sure. It hadn't been revealed to him yet, Brother Pete, uh, that he was the Son of God. All they knew uh, is they obeyed him. Uh, they followed after him. Uh, they believed on him. Uh, but I'm happy to tell you that you don't have to have it all figured out from day one. Uh, you just have to get in there, put your shoulder to the wheel, get your nose in the Bible, and your knees on the floor, and God will make out of you what he wants to make out of you. I was excited when I read that, Brother Shannon, and I saw that they described him. They don't, remember Matthew 16, Brother David? He said, whom do you say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it to you, but my Father, oh, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost moving. The Lord is wanting to do some revealing in some people's lives. He's wanting to open up some things to you. He's wanting to take you places. Oh, the Lord is wanting to do some things in some folks' lives. They didn't have it all figured out. They didn't have all the answers. They had not arrived. They were chosen by God. He specifically called them. But there was still some work to do. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy that he continues to work on me. I'm happy to know that he continues to mold me and shape me and make me into his image and likeness, aren't you? And Nathaniel said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Now we got to understand that this was not, if you study the history a little bit, this was not necessarily a snobbish remark. But Brother Robbie, it was merely a statement of a fact that was reflecting the reputation of Nazareth where Jesus was brought up. Nazareth was not highly thought of as a city. They had a very crude way of speaking. Apparently they were not a very high moral character. They were not very religious. And they were not very important. The, the representative from Nazareth, if you will, was not invited to the high table at the religious festivals. They were kind of considered the armpit of Israel. If you'll allow that illustration. They are cynical and negative in nature, Brother David. This is proven by their unwillingness to just believe on Jesus. When he desired to do many great miracles there, they couldn't get past their perspective of him and see him as he truly was. 
This is not a place where people desire to be. Nathaniel's comments were just based upon his experience with Nazareth. Philip responded. Because you see, Nathaniel, in a way, Brother McKinney, was insulting the choice that Philip had made. When he said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip has just proclaimed Jesus of Nazareth as the one the prophet spoke about. Philip has declared his belief and his willingness to follow him. But Philip responded in such a non-confronting way with this very simple offering. Come and see. So what if he's from Nazareth? So what if he's not a member of the religious elite? So what if he doesn't speak in a flowery, educated manner? But the, the directive that we've got to give is not one of getting angry, not one of getting our dander up. They're not insulting us anyway. They just don't know. We've got to be quick to tell them, Brother Doyle, come see Come see. I can't explain it to you. Brother David, I can't describe it. There's not any good words to even tell how good it is to feel the power of the Holy Ghost. There's not even any good way to describe it. The only thing I know to do is say, come see. Come see. We ain't, we ain't here to fight nobody. We're not here to knock heads with nobody. We can, if, if all else fails, how about just in the beginning say, come see. Come see. I can tell you, beyond the shadow of a doubt, the most hardened cynic could come into this place right now and they cannot deny that the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is moving uh, in 1031 Mill Street. They cannot deny that the Holy Ghost uh, is in operation in this place. Come see. Phillips, reconcile Phillips' initial address of come see. Or, or we have found him. Come see. We don't have to be afraid of disappointment. And this way of living will not appeal to everybody. We're not rich. We're not affluent. Uh, our reaction to any and all opposition uh, should not be one uh, of, of, uh, of being on the offensive uh, or feel like we've got to say something. Uh, our reaction should be we found him. Come and see. Verse 47. John saw Nathaniel, Jesus, excuse me. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition of everybody. I said this is the definition of everybody, or at least how we've got to become when we come to Jesus. The first recognition was this is a man I can use. What you see is what you get with old Nathaniel. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Uh, there's no guile in him. There's no pretense in him. Uh, but he responds honestly and with an honest heart. Uh, hence his words. Philip said, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, that's the one we've been looking for. And Nathaniel said, in my experience, uh, there ain't much good comes out of Nazareth. And Jesus... Well, I tell you what, I guess the whole gist of this message is uh, is we've got to learn to begin to look through the eyes of Jesus uh, instead of the eyes of man. Uh, Philip didn't take it uh, a personal. Philip didn't take it as an affront. Uh, Philip, Philip didn't take it as an attack. Uh, Philip just saw it for what it was. Uh, and Jesus, more so than anybody, saw it for what it was. Uh, I can see uh, Nathaniel. There ain't nothing good ever come out of Nazareth. Uh, everybody I know from Nazareth is a loser. Everybody I know from Nazareth stinks. Uh, everybody I know from Nazareth didn't even graduate from high school. Everybody I know from Nazareth is no good for nothing. Brother Rice, I feel like that's how he's feeling in his heart. Uh, Philip said, come and see. He said, I can't wait to get there and show Philip uh, that he's just gone moon-eyed, gone crazy, drank a little bit too much or something. Then he shows up to Jesus uh, with a confrontational heart maybe. Jesus recognizes him uh, not as an enemy. Jesus recognizes him not as an adversary. Uh, but the first thing he does is compliment him. Brother Rice, it thrills me to no end uh, when I see in the book uh, that the Bible said in Isaiah, my God, help me right now, in Isaiah chapter number 55, for my, uh, he said, he said, my thoughts are not, 
Oh, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. As the sun, as the snow comes down and the rain comes down, and you don't know where it goes, so are my ways above your ways. And I just get beside myself, Brother Pete, when I realize he's in control. He's in control. And he knows the end from the beginning. He knows way more than I know. He sees way more than I see. And I've got to lean under him and not into my own understanding. This is a man I can use. Verse 48. And Nathaniel, whoo! Y'all got to see this now. Nathaniel ain't never met Jesus. Nathaniel don't think too much of folks from Nazareth. And before Philip can say. Nathaniel, I'd like to introduce you to Jesus. Jesus would like to introduce you to Nathaniel. Jesus sees him coming. It says, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathaniel says, How do you know me? From where have we made an acquaintance in the past? Where do you know me from? Jesus answered and said unto him, We kind of get the idea that when we find somebody, invite them to church, the Lord says, all right, good job. It's nice to meet you. Like we're introducing him to somebody, Brother David. You know, like, Lord, we, we brought him to you. Now you change him up. He didn't tell. He, he said, Nathaniel said, how long have you been knowing me? From whence do you know me? And Jesus said, before that Philip called you. So that tells me that a long time before Michelle started praying for you, he already had his eyes on you. Long time before you married into the Lot family, he already had his eyes on you. While the devil was trying to tell you you've gone too far and you've done too much, he had his eyes on you from way back then. Before them church folks got a hold of you, I knew you. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. My God. We've got to realize that his eye is on the sparrow. Oh, Ooh, what he don't say right here, Marcus, what he don't say is, I heard you when you said there wasn't nothing good come out of Nazareth. And that didn't hurt my feelings. It didn't bother me. Because I saw you. You, didn't, you just think, you just think Philip's the one that got a hold of you. <laughs> You just think Philip's the one that was going to introduce you. Oh, Philip's just a, he's just a worker in my plan. I've had my eyes on you, buddy. I've had my eyes on you. Saint of God, hear me right now. The Lord's had his eyes on you. He's watching you. He said, behold, behold, I stand, behold, I stand at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open unto me, behold, I will Come in and sup with him. I saw you. Isn't that amazing, Brother McKinney? I saw you. Saints of God, how many people are there in our community? How many people are there that live next door to you? How many people that you work with that the Lord's already got his eyes on them? The Lord's already got them picked out. He's just waiting on you to say, 
He's just waiting on you to say, come see. Come see. Come see. Oh, just come see. I may not be able to tell you the plan of salvation. I may not be able to quote you chapters and verses. But all I can tell you right now is come see. Come see. Come see. We have found it. Come and see. Jesus already knows them. Our responsibility is to bring them into his presence. You can see it thinking about thinking about Lacey coming to the Lord. Sister Stacy's on her way to the post office. Unbeknownst to her, no reason why she decides to go a different way. We're creatures of habit, but she took a different road that day. And she decides to pick her up and give her a ride. And while they're getting a ride, she said, Come go to church with me. That's translated into Bibleese. Come see. Come and see. And now Lacey's here. I talked to her mother the other day, and her mother said, I'm coming back to y'all church. I liked it. I liked what I felt. I liked you preaching. I'll be back. And then my buddy Gerald coming in here, and he's about to get the Holy Ghost. Huh? It's all, Brother Manning, it's all about come see. It's all about come see. That's it. Come and see. Come and see. I've been hearing, I've been hearing y'all, y'all putting on Facebook, telling stuff. Everybody's inviting people. Everybody's getting excited. They're, oh my God in mercy. I've been saying we're going to have 300 Easter Sunday. I might have shot low, brother. Because, Brother Rice, the power of the Holy Ghost is here. All they got to do is come see. That's it. You don't have to. You, you ain't having. I ain't having to talk to nobody about holiness. I ain't having to talk to nobody about you don't believe this and you don't believe that. Because they're looking me up, Sister Virginia, saying, I'm coming to your church. I'm coming to your church. They ain't worried about. Because while they're under the fig tree. His eyes are on him. His eyes are on him. Oh, let me get long. <laughs> Come and see. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I guess. Oh, God. Marcus, I guess why I'm so excited is this the Pentecost I came up in? <laughs> Kenny, this is how it was for years and years and years. That's how we had church all my life. Verse 49. I'm winding up. And Nathaniel answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, Master, Teacher, you're the one. Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Just as strongly, Brother McKinney, somebody hear me right now. Just as strongly as Nathaniel knew there was no good thing could come out of Nazareth. He was convinced. Can any good thing? That's a sorry place. But when he was introduced to Jesus, when it clicked in his mind... Oh, he's the one. Immediately, immediately, he said, you're the man. Now I found you. Thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. 
Now, you folks hear me. You folks that just got the Holy Ghost and those of us that are getting all excited again. Verse 50. Let's stand. Verse 50. Jesus answered and said unto him, If it blew your mind that I told you I saw you under the fig tree, if you think it's a big deal that I've already had my eyes on you, hold on. Hold on, brother. If you think it's good in the beginning, you wait till you swam a few rivers. You wait till you climbed a few mountains. You wait till you fell down a few times and felt the power of the Holy Ghost reach down and just uh, just tell you, hold on, rest there a minute, and then pick you up and lead you to a rock that's higher than you are. You wait until he comes along and your head's down and he puts his great spiritual hand under there and lifts your head. And as the old song said, it gets sweeter as the days go by. Oh, it gets sweeter as the moments fly. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. Oh, I told Brother Booby and Sister Bobby Lynn today, and I, I've preached this to our church, so it's no secret. Uh, I'm so ashamed uh, that I waited till I was nearly 40 years old to begin to really learn how to pray, Brother David. But now, Brother Robbie, there it's just no telling. There's no telling. Now that I realize his eyes on me, now that I realize something good can come out of Nazareth, now that I realize there is power in the name of Jesus, that I've realized he is wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father and the prince of peace. And before my mama brought me to church, he had his eyes on me, Brother McKinney. Before mom and daddy brought me to church that first time, he had his eyes on me. If you think it's a big deal, you ain't seen nothing yet. You shall see greater, you shall see greater things than these. We won't stop. We won't stop. We won't rest. We won't back down. I'm going to keep on preaching. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on worshiping. I'm going to keep on believing. I'm going to keep on saying, come see. I'm going to keep on saying, come see. Because with each person that gets filled with the Holy Ghost, there's more spirit and there's more power. And these new folks teach us what it's like once again to be fresh in the Holy Ghost. Come and see. Let that be the call word of this week. Let that be on the front of your mind, in front of your eyes all week long. Come and see. When you tell people that you work with uh, what's going on in your life uh, and they start asking you questions, uh, your answer just to me, why don't you come see? Come see. Oh, don't... De- don't disqualify them because they got a lot of money. Don't disqualify them because they might be a little snooty. Don't disqualify them because they might smell a little bad. Don't disqualify them because they ain't got no money. Don't disqualify them because of what color they might be or who their daddy might be or who their mama might be because we have understand tonight through the Word of God that the eyes of the Lord are already on them. If the you bump into them, it's because God intended for it to be that way. Come see. Come see. Come see. Oh, come on now. Come on. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord has moved here in a mighty way. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is in this place in a mighty way.